<laughs> Greetings, I'm your host, Dr. Wolfiel, and welcome to a special October entry of Wolfiel Air Reviews. I'm going to be covering something a little different this time around, reviewing Zombillennium, a French animated horror family comedy based on the comic series of the same name by Arthur de Pittens. Now, this movie came out in 2017, but it hasn't made it to American shores with an English dub until just recently, so it's been about a two-year wait. I'm a fan of the comics, so I've been waiting for this flick the whole time to finally release. I couldn't even get my hands on the film in French all this time. I almost thought the movie would never release in the States, which is weird, because the dub has existed the whole time these two years. I don't know why it took so long. But Zombillennium's finally out in the States to virtually no fanfare, so it's up to me to highlight this obscure flick. Zombillennium is the story of the titular horror theme park, where the monsters scaring guests are indeed secretly real monsters in plain sight. How are you kids doing? I've got some treats for you. Whoa, stop it! Apparently, Zombillennium is the only place on Earth where the dead roam free. If you're a monster, you can either work in a theme park or toil away in hell. What's the difference? Now, if you're familiar with the comics, the film retains many of the same characters, but it has a very different story, centering around a different main character. In the comic, the main character was Aurelian, but in the movie, he's been replaced by a new character named Hector Sachs, a busybody safety inspector and single father who I guess makes for a more compelling central character of a family film compared to the passive main character in the comics. Daddy, are monsters real? Ah, well, if they are, I certainly hope they pay their taxes like the rest of us. Hector ends up in a car crash crash due to an employee at the nearby theme park and decides to get revenge by paying Zombillennium a surprise inspection, aiming to shut it down, not knowing it's managed by the real undead. You... you scared me. That's my job. Do you have an appointment? Hector is sax. I control standards and always come unannounced. <laughs> That's my job. And he ends up joining their ranks and making an orphan out of his daughter Lucy. Hector ends up being bitten both by the vampire director of the park and a werewolf executive out of indecision of what kind of monster he should be. I'm going to send a report to general inspection and... <laughs> Ten bucks he lands on his feet and he's a werewolf. Ten bucks he turns into a bat and he's a vampire. <laughs> Zombie. After meeting some of his co-workers like Sirius, a supposed civil rights activist turned skeleton, and Gretchen, the witch who got him into this mess, Hector refuses to adjust to his new role, but unfortunately is now a big red devil guy and is forced to accept it. I, I'm horrible. Which means you can't leave the park. He'll get used to it. Okay, so you got your setup, but what's the actual plot of Zombillennium? Well, that's where we run into some trouble. Francis, the director of the park, is not turning a profit on Zombillennium, and the only thing drawing in crowds are the trendy, sexy vampires at the top of the hierarchy, so Hell gives the vampire an ultimatum. He either turns the park around and attracts investors, or all of the undead have to return to Hell. You have two weeks to straighten things out. If not, I will reclaim what is mine for your lot. This means a one-way ticket to Hell. Have I made myself clear? Crystal clear, sir. Okay, solid objective, but the problem with the film's story is the main character, Hector. He's just not interesting. From the start of the movie, Hector is a lame wimp, which is perfect for growth throughout the film, but the character doesn't have an arc. When faced with the ultimatum, he instantaneously shifts into a leadership role and aims to turn the park around all on his own. I'll do everything I can to keep it in business. You can bring on those investors, Mr. Van Blanc, and trust me, I'll give them a scare they'll never forget. And it doesn't help that the character comes with the plot contrivance of apparently being in a rock band before he was a safety inspector and already having show business skills at his disposal. There's just nothing really to latch onto here. Hector doesn't even attempt to reunite with his daughter himself. The movie could have had her be the motivation for taking charge and saving the park, but it's just hollow seeing the guy basically become a Mary Sue monster who single-handedly and predictably becomes the most popular attraction at the park extremely quickly and, despite being a middle-aged man, even sparks a weird budding romance with the teenage witch Gretchen. Gretchen herself is pretty much the mascot of the comics and is supposed to be this badass witch, but she doesn't get explored much or get to do much herself. So, you're selling balloons? No, I'm walking them. The English dub for Zombillennium itself is decent for the most part, but a lot of the delivery is kind of wooden and doesn't really help sell the characters and humor. You're a zombie, right? Not a snooty vampire or a werewolf bully. How did you die anyway? I'm not dead! <laughs> Alright, sure. Ah! 
Of course, there is a villain standing in Hector's way to make things a little more interesting, but it's a really shitty villain, I gotta say. Basically, it's an obvious parody of the vampire from Twilight who's jealous that he's no longer getting the spotlight and that Hector is stealing his girl Gretchen, so Twilight Vampire aims to take over the park himself. The future of monsters is romanticism, sensuality, passion, mystery. And certainly not so-called fear induced by rotting corpses. Okay, so Twilight came out more than a decade ago, so having the central villain be a parody of it just feels so fucking outdated. The villain was made for this movie, not appearing in the comics, and he cannot carry the film. He's just a one-dimensional parody. You'd think a movie with monsters as the heroes could come up with something especially monstrous as the villain, but no. Zombies on a billboard? <laughs> Why not advertise our trash cans while you're at it? Yes. Someday. <laughs> We'll clean up things around here, and we'll sort the rubbish! A more interesting story is here, where the monsters cut their ties from hell and finally become free, but instead the movie makes a simple statement about how dumb the sexy monster trend is compared to actually scary monsters. That's why they don't make Twilight movies anymore, come on. The movie's aware that thriller references are old, but thinks making fun of Twilight is cutting edge? Thriller's old, you need a new groove. And it's not even thriller. Yeah, well, we couldn't afford the rights. I can see why vampires are so trendy. Part of what makes the Zombillennium comics interesting is how it explores the complex work dynamics and bureaucracy of a monster theme park, and the movie does mildly get this across with its class struggle between the zombies and vampires, but it doesn't really take it far enough to give the movie a sense of depth like the comics. So the story isn't great and the characters lack depth, but I do gotta say, this is a lovely looking animated film, perfectly translating the look of Arthur Depins' artwork to the big screen. The film is computer animated, but it possesses the colorful cell shaded look of the the comics, giving it an uncanny blend of a 2D look with a 3D shading style that just looks really nice. The best comparison I can make is to Gendy Tartakovsky, just with more realistic proportions, but still plenty angular and exaggerated. The characters' personalities don't get to shine much in this movie, but the designs are still plenty memorable, and even though the film doesn't have enough in the way of humor, the animation still makes the most of its monster characters with some nice visual gags. My biggest complaint with the film visually, though, is that it doesn't really show much of Zombillennium. It mostly dwells on showing behind the scenes operation, but you don't get to see much of the park itself up close. I'm a sucker for theme parks, especially monster theme parks like Spooky Island from Scooby-Doo, so I was really disappointed that the movie only shows like one of the rides at the park. I know the main thing is the monsters, but still, I want to see the theme park stuff too. Another disappointment is with the film's music. Zombillennium was co-produced by Matt Bastard, frontman for the French band Skip the Use, and he also played Sirius in the French dub, but the movie only only has a few songs by the band. There was an opportunity to put more songs by the band to pep the film up, but mostly musically, the film just has a really generic score. It sucks too, because one of the first Zombillennium things was a music video made for a Skip the Use song, so it's unfortunate that it doesn't have more songs. Overall, Zombillennium is a nice looking animated movie that isn't bad, but it just feels kind of shallow, unfortunately, like this movie's holding itself back for some reason. There's great potential here, but the flick doesn't see its ideas all the way through, and there's nothing to really latch on to. The movie also has a weird tone where it's got some dark adult themes involving actual biblical hell that might not appeal to kids, and a bright peppiness to it that probably would turn off most adult horror fans, so it doesn't really do a good job as a family film where it can appeal to kids and adults alike. Power's here, you pour the sugar in here, you grab a stick and spin it like this, and voila, you don't need a master's degree to use this machine. So long, buddy. I think I used to be a pharaoh. It's disappointing because the movie looks so good, but the stuff beneath the surface just doesn't do its visuals justice. If you are a fan of art and animation, I definitely recommend seeing Zombillennium just for how it looks, but I'd say read the comics first before giving the movie a watch. They're much better, but definitely support more indie animated horror stuff like this if you can. I will say though, if you're a horror fan who's a parent or needs to babysit some kids around Halloween, seek Zombillennium out if you're tired of having to play Cars or Frozen for the millionth time. You might get a more enjoyment out of it, and even spark an interest in horror for the next generation. I give Zombillennium a California adventure out of Disneyland. If you like this October video, like it, but if you loved it, subscribe for more and click the bell icon to keep track of future uploads and streams. Make sure to follow me on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Wolfula. Also, make sure to download the Pop Base app on iOS and Android to hang out with a virtual me, complete with games, quizzes, video commentaries, and answering your questions and suggestions. Find
finally, if you can, support me in the channel by pledging to my Patreon, where you can get some exclusive goodies and early access to videos. I'd like to thank my Platinum supporters on Patreon for their pledges. The channel would be nothing without their support, and it's greatly appreciated. I've been your host, Dr. Wolfula, signing out. See you all in the next October video.